in uh, at this point in time no in terms of social media everyone has their way of documenting their lives and i it wouldn't be a stretch to say that this may be the most documented period of history yeah. So you know you take in the pictures, the memes, the videos, etc. No, but at the same time, there are certain very unique problems that it introduces. One of which is, I think, is very uh, proponent to the presidential elections now, which is historical revisionism. So I just wanted to get your quick thoughts on this. No, the one is to to give the, to give the monster a real name. It's not revisionism; it's distortion. Because mm-hmm. when you revise, you revise to correct. You revise using truth. But when you wow. mm-hmm. when you go against truth, you distort, diba? So I mean, that's the problem with the Philippines. We we keep using terms that are that are counter counter to what they actually are. So how can you revise when you are making something wrong, diba? Mm-hmm. So. Uh, we're we're very very careless with with terms. I mean things like social distancing. It's not social distancing. It's physical distancing, diba? Social mm-hmm. distancing is far worse than than physical distancing. No, so but anyway, um, and that's but one of the things that history teaches you. It gives you a built-in shit meter, diba? So you know when you're you know bullshit when you see it, and. Uh, <laughs> The, the the sad part is that this generation, while we have, and it shows you also human nature, di ba? The internet was created to open doors. Yung pala, it closes doors. Uh, Facebook, for example, and social media was made to connect, but now it is used to divide. Um, I'd like to think that uh, what happens kasi now is we're all run by algorithms, no? Um one of my exercises in class was usually to open open your laptops and your cell phones and i want you to google something simple like spoon you know uh, so they'll google spoon and then you look at your results and you compare it with the person to your left and the person to your right and you will see that the search results are not the same because yeah. an algorithm has already decided what you want to hear uh, so it, it has made echo chambers in us. It shows us only, uh, well, it's tailored to what our, our demographic is like, where we come from, what our, la- I mean, the language, for example, it will only give you English language results or so when you could get German results, which are more, which are different. No, so again, it's that, it's learning to use the, learning to use what we get on the internet. No, um, and Fake news is not new. We've had that for thousands of years, no. And uh, it, it's just that you you have to know. And for me, the, the best example is getting to know something well. Uh, my my example is always a soft drink. Let's say you you're used to drinking Coke. They give you a Pepsi. No, it's it's the same color. It's fizzy. It's a dog, But when you drink it. When you take, when you put it in your mouth, you know immediately it's not the same. Diba? So it's it's the same process, no? So uh, the internet is is can be both good and bad depending on on how you use it. So again, it's that we're reading a lot today, but what are we reading and what kind of things do we read? No, um, we already have short attention spans, and then you, I mean. Will you get your news from Twitter? What will you get with 114 characters? It doesn't tell you much. So it's it's a different generation. They don't read newspapers anymore. And you would think, for example, like I spend time reading the New York Times, but most people will get their news or their current events from their social media feed. I mean, I won't go to Twitter for news, diba? I'll go to the Inquirer. I'll go to uh, the New York Times, but again, it's that it's knowing uh, how to use what is given to you, you know, um, mm. and being critical about, about what you read. I mean, it's also that you no, know, like I noticed this, and I think it's it's a generational thing. I don't know if it's true with you. Um, when when you go to the library, when people don't like to go to the library, you know, in, in a physical class, my students would say, is, isn't it online? I said, not everything is online. 
And one student actually went up to me, almost belligerent, parang, you want me to go to the library? Yes. You want me to handle a physical book? Yes. Parang, parang I came, I'm a dinosaur forcing him to read a physical book. But I realized now that when you go to the library, you say, I want Ambeto Campos result without the overcoat. You, you go to the computer terminal, the OPAC, you type Ambeto Campos. Lalabas na kagam. Result without the overcoat. You know exactly where to go. Diba? But in my generation, because we didn't have OPA, we had to use what was called card catalog. So it's these wooden boxes with little, little cardboard um, things with titles. So you mm -hmm. could look by author, you could look by subject, you could look by title. So in order to find a book, you have to scroll through these little cards. And by doing that, you actually look at other things before you got to the book that you wanted. And sometimes serendipity, something you're not looking for, ay, meron pala nito, which was more important. But now because you click in something and it gives you the answer right away, wala na. No? So when people Google, they will usually get the topmost thing in the results. Not knowing that, let's say, some companies, they actually pay Google to put their search result at the very mm. top. Yeah. But my training is when I do Google, I will go page by page until Google cannot give me anything uh, anymore. And I get what I think is the most valid uh, source. But if you're trained to just get the one in the top, ay, nako, wala na mangyayari sa'yo. So it's that. It's that kind of, uh, that kind of, of training. 